few folks ask about how it is that I choose the places that I do choose to go out and look for river crystals. And so I wanted to share some of my process here. Um, I use Google Earth a ton is a really important tool to me for what I do, this hobby. And the way that I use it is partially with the satellite imagery and then I use free information primarily through USGS, some maps that are available through them, historical maps of the watersheds, and then also a geological map. And the geological map is statewide for Oregon, and I've seen it for Washington. I would imagine it exists for most of the western U.S., if not the entire U.S., available for free online through USGS. And if you're in another country outside of the United States, hopefully there is some digital uh, information like that available to you. But if not, you can still do this even just using the satellite imagery available through Google Earth. So please stay tuned even if you're watching from another country. Um, all right, so before we dive into this, just wanted to do a couple of quick shout outs for myself personally. When I started into this hobby, wondering here in Portland, where are the places that I can go out and uh, not get skunked? Basically, just like go out and, uh, you know, I shouldn't say get not get skunked because every time going out looking for rocks, uh, whether you find anything or not, is a worthwhile experience. So <laughs> my favorite thing about it is honestly just beating through the bush and stomping around in the water. So, um, yeah, but it is very exciting. When you find a spot that's loaded with really cool rocks, there's nothing quite like it. It's, uh, it feels like uh, the places that I've seen out here, it just feels like you're stepping into a set from a movie or something like that. It's just un indescribably blissful and, um, and beautiful to, to come into one of those places. So. I hope you can, you can all find one of those um, on your own. And what's you know what's even more rewarding is doing some research and finding a place like that for yourself. One of those places you step into and you're just kind of like, wow, it's clear that nobody has been here this season or nobody has maybe been here in a couple of years. Um, and, you know, they take a little bit of work to get to and they take a little bit of work to discover, but um, they're really, really special to, to come by. So I will... Uh, I will keep my fingers crossed that you all find your own place like that using this technique. So a couple of shout outs um, to the folks who started leading me in the right direction when I first got into this hobby. Gem Trails, the Gem Trails series is awesome. I'll have links to all these down below. Rock Hounding Oregon by Lars Johnson, awesome book. And then Tim Fisher's uh, Or Rock On DVD, super cool. So if you haven't checked out those materials and you live out in the Pacific Northwest, please support those folks and check them out because, yeah, those, I don't know how I would have gotten started without those. Those are really, really great. So props. And all right, Google Earth. It's awesome. It's free. It's downloads in just a few minutes and you could be up and running with it doing all kinds of cool kind of base camp and uh, dream, you know, planning, figure out where you want to go and explore. Out here in the Pacific Northwest, there are so many rivers and streams, it can be kind of overwhelming to decide where you want to go. Um, and that's a wonderful problem to have. It's one of the things I love most about being out here in Oregon. It's just the number of um, adventures that there are. I live down here in Portland, and easy striking distance from there, pretty much any direction you can head out and be in adventure mode and be surrounded by beautiful river crystal places. So um, let's see, where should we start? I guess the first thing, so the first thing is download Google Earth, get up and running with that. There's all kinds of tutorials and stuff online, but for the most part, you open it up, it looks like this. Um, you grab on, you can scan around, you can zoom in and out with these things over here. You can tip the view around. Um, you can do all kinds of cool visual stuff. And then over in this panel over here, this is where you toggle different layers on and off. So what we're going to be using today are layers. We're going to use a layer that just makes it easier to find the streams or to see the streams in the rivers. We're going to use a layer that makes it um, possible to see the underlying geology of the area that you're, you're interested in. And then my favorite part is using a path layer to get an elevation profile of the stream that you're working on and then use that to determine what stretch of the stream you want to go to to look for uh, to look for your rocks because 
a lot of these rocks are going to fall out of the, um, the river flow in certain places. And so we're going to try to find those places on the rivers that you're interested in. And the rivers that you're interested in, you're interested in because they flow over a certain kind of geology. And then you're going to go to those places and um, sometimes you're going to find a very, very special rock place. Um, but even if you don't find a very special rock place, you'll find a very, very special uh, new nature place. So you can't go, you can't go wrong. How can you lose in this hobby? Um, all right, so you got Google Earth downloaded, and we're up and running with that. The next thing that you're going to want to do is uh, you can just Google USGS, United States Geological Survey, uh, the name of your state, and then geological map or yeah just name of your state geological map again i've seen these for washington um, and uh, hopefully they exist for your state if not you can skip this part of the step actually you can skip the next couple parts of the step and just go to the end when we do the elevation profile uh, if you're going just exclusively on um, satellite imagery all right so if you are uh, going to be using one of these geo maps. You find it on here. You download the KML file. That'll download. You bring that into Google Earth by going File Open, and you select that KML file. You open. It's all geo referenced. Oh yeah, I've already had it on there. So it's all geo referenced. It's going to pin um, exactly to where it needs to pin to. You don't have to worry about aligning it or anything like that. So it just sets right down on there. And so this is a visualization of all the geological um, areas in Oregon. And so each of those different colors is a different geological area. So if you come down here, and my computer is not the fastest. It's kind of getting laggy. But you can click on any one of these layers and learn a little bit more about that color. So undifferentiated, tophaceous, sedimentary rocks, tufts, and basalt, all kinds of information about it. A lot of it will uh, be like, you know, new stuff. That much of it will kind of seem like an alien language, probably, if you're anything like me. And uh, that gives you an opportunity to get onto Wikipedia and learn some more about uh, the planet that we live on. So if you read something in here and you're like, what the heck does that mean? Uh, check out Wikipedia and hopefully um, hopefully you can get some more info there. Okay, so the rocks that I look for primarily are like carnelian and agate and quartz. And so these are rocks that happen in association with volcanic uh, geology. And so there's certain kinds of volcanic rocks and volcanic uh, like flow regions, ancient flows of lava that are being eroded now, and as they're being eroded by you know by streams, the streams are kicking those uh, semi-precious gemstones out of that eroding lava, and then basically conveyor belting them down along the way, uh, smashing them up as they carry them. Ultimately, you know if that stuff survives long enough, it'll trickle out of these streams out into the Columbia River in my region and get nice and polished down in the sandy river bottoms out there and then maybe even spat out all the way out to the ocean um, and so tons of people go out and hunt the ocean beaches for agates at the low tide they'll go out and find the rocks that have been deposited from these rivers out onto the beaches or from the columbia out onto these beaches and um, the texture of those rocks looks very different because they've been basically polished in the rock tumbler of the sandy rivers that are out along the ocean beaches and the Columbia River itself. Um, and so they look really different. Whereas if you go out and you're closer to the source, if you find a river that's closer to the source of where those uh, gemstones are being kicked out of the lava itself, um, often the stones will be much more rough. They won't have that uh, rock tumbled look. They'll look, uh, they'll look very different. And sometimes you can even find them as full, you know, molded, uh, pieces of the, the pocket from the lava that they were formed in and those are some of my favorites those are really exciting it's like pulling out a little gemstone egg um, so yeah we're gonna try to find kind of try to set you up to find some of those places yourself so 
depending on what sort of uh, rock you're looking for, do some research, check out Wikipedia, find out the, um, the age and you know the type of uh, geology that you're looking for. Get the map, get the geological map from USGS for your area, and then find that region. And so you can do that by, you can come over here and you can expand. I did that just by clicking this little arrow here next to geologic units. So you can expand that and then you can get a, a layer for every single one of these colors that's on here as a corresponding checkbox over here. So if you unclick it, that will disappear from the map. Another way that you could do this is unclick everything and then just add them one at a time, the ones that you're interested in. Um, and so for you, that may be like the Eocene volcanics, um, but it's going to kind of depend on your area. So do a little research, find out this, the geology type that you're looking for in your area, and then use this to hone in on that. And if you need some help figuring out uh, exactly what kind of geology type you're looking for in your area, please check in with your rock club. The, the community rock clubs are um, such a cool resource. We have the, the one out here by me is the Mount Hood Rock Club, and I've been to a couple of meetings out there, and the folks are just super kind. Everybody's really excited about rocks, really excited about geology, and um, just kind of a really cool community vibe. So um, definitely check out your rock club, get some more specific information about what sort of uh, geological areas you should be looking in in your region, and then get your map, get it set up, find some of those regions on here, and then say, okay, say you found um, some Eocene volcanics that were somewhere over in like Montana. Okay, so you find that area, then you're going to come over here in the USGS, they call it Map Finder, and so you come in here and you look up that same area. So say it was White River, Montana. We search for that. And then you can pick any one of these maps. And there are maps going back to, some of these are from the 30s, I think. But you can pick whichever one of these you like. I guess maybe more recent, the better. And you want to get this KMZ file. And that's going to be georeferenced the same way that that um, Oregon geology file was when we opened it in Google Earth. This KMZ file is going to open the same way, so it's going to be pinned exactly to where it needs to be on that digital version of Earth in Google Earth. So I've already got that downloaded over here, so I'm just going to come into Google Earth and I'm going to open that up in the same way. File open, and here it is Swan Peak, Montana, Methuselah. All right. Okay. So, here we go. Now this is my favorite part. So this is where you're gonna pick out your creek. So again, this is gonna be a place where the creek itself is gonna be flowing over the geological area that you're going to be in, that you're interested in. And so once you have a creek, once you've identified a creek and it's on public land and you are able to, to feasibly get there, what you're going to do is you're going to come up here, pick up this Add Path tool, and we're going to do down here, this is Trickle Creek. So I'm just going to type in here, Trickle Creek. And let's change the profile, keep it pink, and we'll go five. All right. Oh, oops, my bad. Let's try that again. All right, Trickle Creek 2. OK, so now before you close this window, you actually have to draw. All right, so I'm just going to come down here onto Trickle Creek. I'm going to click and hold and draw all along as close as I can to the creek itself. Just going to follow that. And then. Let's see, let's even get some of the main stem here. So it looks like it joins up with Cannon Creek. I got off a little bit, but that'll be all right. Cannon Creek keeps coming down. And then Gorge Creek, nice little bend in the river there, keeps going. So that's the idea. You can um, go for 
long stretches or you can break it up and do individual paths for each creek that you're interested in. But once you have that creek down, you can actually come in here. This is my favorite tool in Google Earth. You come in here and you right click on that path and then you go show elevation profile. And this is going to give you basically a sideways view of what that watershed looks like as it's coursing down over the landscape. And so what you want to do is you want to find the places where this watershed kind of troughs off and um, slows down. So right in here, you can imagine, you know, shooting down here, the water's going to be moving really fast, flying down here. And then it hits a place kind of like this. Oh, doesn't really want to move. There we go. All right, it hits a place kind of like right in here, I guess right in here. And it kind of troughs off before there's another little lip right here, and then it kicks down and goes really fast down into the gorge, right? So these places where it levels off, kind of troughs out a little bit, and sometimes there will even be a little lip on the end, these are the places where the silicates, the semi-precious gemstones, the heavy stuff is going to fall out of solution in the water. And so if there's metal in there, you know, like this would work theoretically for gold hunting also or gold prospecting if you were gold prospecting, but these are the places that um, the landscape is going to act basically like a sluice box and hold on to that heavier stuff as it tumbles down along the watershed. And so if I were looking at this creek, I would definitely want to go and check this place out. And what's cool about these places is you get in here and often these will be the places that are shared uh, by, the, they're basically they're flooded, there's tons of water there. So they're usually very lush and very pretty. And so sometimes there will be elk wallows in there, you know, deer, coyotes, um, they can be really, really cool places to explore even outside of the fact that there are places that tend to hold on to um, gemstones. So go and check these places out and um, please let me know how it works out for you. I really hope that y'all are able to find some special river crystal places of your own. And um, for folks who are outside of the U.S. or folks who are don't have the U.S. Geological Survey maps available or don't have um, overlays that make it make this other process possible, you can do this same kind of deal just by using the satellite imagery. So. Check out the area that you're interested in, get your path tool, trace your path, just like this, just like we did before, all right? And then do your elevation profile, and then go in and check, go in and check places like this out. Some of this is a little wonky because I just sketched that on there and wasn't super accurate, but yeah, there's there's some troughs in here that'd be worth checking out if this were a river that flowed over um, the right kind of geology, which I have no idea if it does or not, but that's how I do it. That's how I, um, I choose the places that I go and look. And sometimes that turns into a great day of rock hunting, but even if it doesn't turn into a great day of rock hunting, it always is a, a beautiful day one way or another, just getting out and exploring a new spot. Um, and my favorite way to do that is just walking a creek being as low impact as possible. Um, I definitely subscribe to the leave no trace. So, um, you know, no digging, I don't bring any tools with me or anything like that. Um, I, yeah, I just, I love to go out into those places and experience them. And um, from the sounds of it, you folks do too. So I wish you all the best of luck out there. Please let me know how it goes. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to hit me up. All right. Thank you very much.